Howdy. While the vast majority of foods we have nowadays are way safer than what we had 100 years ago, there are some foods that have the potential to be extremely dangerous. In fact, one of these foods was recently turned into a grenade, because I guess that's the world we live in now. We, we turn foods into grenades. Anyway, I'd like to investigate some of these crazy foods today. Let's check out the 10 most dangerous foods. Also, misinformation can be a big issue when it comes to food. Although I've tried to fact check my sources with clinical trials, take this list with a pinch of salt. Always listen to your doctor or nutritionist first. They know a hell of a lot more about nutrition than I ever will. Well, it's not an issue of money, your head is a cheeseburger. Anyway, let's begin. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Number 11. The ghost pepper. There's not many foods out there you'll find turned into military grenades for non-lethal attacks, but well, then there's the ghost pepper. For a long time now, there's been an internet viral video fad called the ghost pepper challenge, which basically consists of a person eating a horrifically hot pepper and then just seeing the person's reaction. Ha! Oh, ha! I let you need something to drink. Where's the water? Listen, I'm not even joking. Why are you no? <laughs> you see, the ghost pepper is ideal for viral videos, as it hits super high on the Scoville scale. In fact, it's only one step under pepper spraying yourself in the face. Go! Ah! Because I guess that would make quality entertainment for this website. In fact, on a scale of one to a million, yes, the scale is quite large, the ghost pepper sits at over a million Scoville points. That's over 170 times hotter than Tabasco sauce. In other words, if you're silly enough to try and eat one, it'll make your mouth feel like it's on fire. So we know it's hot, but just how dangerous is the ghost pepper? Well, as you can imagine, eating one can cause extreme levels of stress, pain and discomfort to many people. Oh God, oh. But there are also documented cases of hospitalizations and health scares from ghost peppers. For example, in 2016 in Ohio, five teenagers were hospitalized after they ate ghost peppers as part of a challenge. Apparently, they had both asthma attacks and allergic reactions. There was also an older man who was sent to the intensive care unit after he consumed a hamburger with ghost peppers. Doctors found he had ruptured his esophagus after excessive vomiting in an eating challenge. But it's worth mentioning, if you're just eating a normal amount, even the hottest peppers are not literally toxic. Researchers found it would take around three pounds of ghost peppers to kill an 150 pound human. So if for some reason you do decide to try a ghost pepper, and I, and I don't condone it, it probably won't kill you. You'll probably just be very miserable for a while. But how are these ghost peppers used as grenades? Well, in 2009, scientists in India announced plans to use the peppers in hand grenades as a non-lethal method to control rioters or in self-defense. They announced that ghost pepper based sprays and grenades could be used to disperse mobs. And so far, ghost pepper based grenades have been successfully used by the Indian Army. In 2015, they successfully used a ghost pepper grenade to flush out a terrorist hiding in a cave. So ghost peppers may be dangerous, but fortunately, we can use that danger to our advantage. Number 10 Marshmallows. Yeah, I'm serious. And it's not like marshmallows aren't a beloved Western treat. People often take marshmallows and roast them on campfires. They put them on biscuits and coffee. They put them in cereals for some reason. The list goes on. So what could possibly make these innocent corn syrupy treats so dangerous? Well, it's not the marshmallow ingredients themselves that are dangerous. It's how people have consumed marshmallows for a very long time. You see, back in 1959, a Peanuts comic strip depicted Snoopy's mouth being filled with an interesting number of marshmallows while Charlie Brown kept count. And that was how it all started. That was how Chubby Bunnies was formed. Where you stuff marshmallows into your mouth and say the term Chubby Bunnies one after the other. The craze took off, and many YouTubers have posted videos of themselves and friends doing the Chubby Bunny Challenge. Even popular Australian actress Rebel Wilson did the Chubby Bunny Challenge on the Jimmy Fallon Show. Chubby Bunny. Alright, good. Though she only got to three or four marshmallows before having to spit them. I've literally got three in my mouth right now. It can't have been that hard. So you may be asking, 
How is this dangerous? Don't marshmallows dissolve in your mouth? Well, actually, they don't. You see, the temperature in your mouth is warm, but it's not warm enough to melt marshmallows straight away. This essentially turns the marshmallows into a sticky, goopy choking hazard in your mouth. And when these games happen, many people can get competitive. Participants are generally egged on to put as many marshmallows in their mouth as possible. Some are even taunted for quitting. How dare you not risk the hazard of choking yourself to death? You big quitter. It's like you enjoy being alive. I'm at four, by the way, and I think I'm already starting to sound stupider than usual. Eventually, with all these marshmallows at once, they can become impossible to chew, swallow, or spit out. And worse yet, due to the size of the marshmallow, it can also be difficult to perform the Heimlich maneuver or dislodge the marshmallow with medical instruments. This is what the Heimlich maneuver normally looks like here if you ever need to perform it. And then you thrust, you pull it in and up, and I'm not gonna do it as hard. In and up, in and up until they, uh, until they can dislodge what is in there and they can breathe again. Unfortunately, as a result of this, there have been two instances where children have choked and passed away on marshmallows. In one case, the challenge took place at a school fair. If you like marshmallows, I don't recommend you stop eating them. Just be aware of the potential dangers of games like Chubby Bunnies. <laughs> I couldn't, I gagged! And for the ninth dangerous food... Rice. Rice is actually the most commonly consumed food in the world. In fact, over 3.5 billion humans eat it. And when I think of rice, I think of a common, healthy, staple food that's harmless. But I was surprised to discover just how dangerous it can be. You see, if improperly stored after cooking, rice can become very dangerous very quickly. If left alone too long, rice goes back to the state it was in before it was cooked. You see, in its raw form, rice contains spores of bacteria called Bacillus cereus. These spores survive the cooking process. Once they've grown to bacteria, they can multiply and produce toxins that cause vomiting and diarrhea. And the longer rice is kept at room temperature, the more likely these spores are to grow and reproduce. But keep in mind, these bacteria take days to form. If someone eats rice that contains Bacillus cereus bacteria, they may get sick and experience vomiting and diarrhea for about one to five hours afterwards. Fortunately, symptoms are generally quite mild and normally don't last more than 24 hours. But keep in mind, rice is a healthy, cheap, filling food, so I certainly don't recommend you avoid it. But to avoid any issues, ideally, rice should be consumed immediately after cooking. But if you want to store the rice for later, that's okay too. Just make sure you store it right. You can store the rice in the fridge, but try not to store it for more than three days. But if you want to store it for longer, you can also freeze your rice for up to a month. But when you reheat the rice, make sure it's steaming hot the whole way through. Number eight. Tomatoes. Oh, come on. Tomatoes? Really? Yeah. Okay, we'll give it a look. These days, tomatoes are a popular food staple that is known and loved wildly, mostly between burgers and cheese. It's also a popular ingredient in many Italian dishes. This is how you make the perfect homemade tomato sauce. Apparently, the tomato is also used in beauty treatments and tan removal for some reason. Apparently, they have been praised for their protective powers against UV rays. Yeah, why don't we double check the empirical evidence on that one? Let's see here. Oh, what a shame, it's bullcrap. Oh, well, I guess instead of smearing tomatoes on my face, I'll just have to use sunscreen like an animal. But anyway, how was this innocent tomato made the dangerous food list? Well, legend has it, in the 1800s, the tomato was considered to be poisonous. Colonel Johnson had originally imported tomato plants in 1808, and it offered farmers prizes for the biggest tomato. But then, Johnson stood on the steps of the Salem courthouse with a basket of tomatoes, and he indicated he was going to eat the tomatoes. <gasps> oh no! I'm gonna do it! I'm really gonna do it! The townspeople went wild in awe and horror. The band began to play the funeral march in the background. Clearly, Johnson was not long for this world. But undeterred, Johnson bit into a tomato and consumed it 
without dying. And from that day forward, the tomato became a delicacy and later a food staple across the world. So what's the technical reason for them being dangerous? Well, to be honest, at this point, I smelled a rat on some of these articles. And once again, I checked the clinical trials. And it turns out, the evidence says so far, unless you have a tomato allergy, tomatoes are mostly fine for you. Though tomatoes are very acidic, so excess consumption can lead to some acid reflux if you're prone to it. But apart from that, one trial showed that regularly eating tomatoes produced a favorable effect in weight loss among overweight people. So apparently you shouldn't always trust things you hear from internet articles in the 1800s. And we can thank Johnson for first demonstrating that. And for seven lucky seven, peanuts. As you might have heard before, food can cause allergic reactions in some people. But peanuts in particular can cause extremely severe reactions, even deadly if not treated. That's why you'll often see on food packaging contains peanuts in bold print. Because even the tiniest shred of peanut can be incredibly dangerous to someone with a peanut allergy. To many people, peanuts are a harmless tasty snack. But to some, they can cause vomiting, stomach cramps, indigestion, diarrhea, shortness of breath, hives or swelling. But the most severe peanut reaction is anaphylaxis. And this can lead to being unable to breathe due to swelling in the throat and airway. And sadly, this allergy also includes my absolute favorite spread, peanut butter. But if you've never had these symptoms from peanuts before, you're probably perfectly safe to enjoy peanut butter whenever you wish. Just keep in mind, there are some people around us who are incredibly sensitive to even the slightest trace of peanuts. In fact, peanuts can be so dangerous to some that many schools have gone completely nut-free to try and avoid the danger altogether. If you ever see someone having a severe peanut reaction such as anaphylactic shock, this is something you can do. Generally, the person's face may go red, their lips might start to puff up, or they might start to cough or wheeze. In this case, you can give the person an antihistamine, such as Claritine or Telfast. But in the most severe reactions, you should use an EpiPen. Most schools' first aid kits will carry these as an emergency precaution. Or if the child's known to have an allergy, they may carry an EpiPen themselves in their backpack. This can literally save a person's life, so it's worth keeping in mind in the back of your head. Most children have a management plan. Ask the child if you're not sure. Many who have a peanut allergy may be able to tell you. But if you're peanut allergy free, you should be perfectly fine to enjoy them. Number six. Mushrooms. Some people can't stand mushrooms, so they'll never have to worry about this one. Ah, sick! But if you're like me, mushrooms can be a great treat to go with risotto, chicken, or a great pasta topper. But when it comes to mushrooms, I never look beyond what I can find at the grocery store, because some species of mushrooms contain poisons that can kill. But the most common result of mushroom poisoning is just gastric upset, vomiting, and diarrhea. Though those are certainly no picnic. Okay, dude, I think that's good. What? The number one advice of many fungi experts is never eat a mushroom unless you can fully identify it. And unfortunately, at this point, mycologists have identified over 14,000 different mushroom species worldwide. So this makes it very risky to go picking mushrooms to chow down upon. You see, many edible and inedible mushrooms look very similar. For example, the white button mushroom, my personal favorite, is the most common mushroom in the grocery store. But in the wild, it can also look very similar to the death cap mushroom, one of the most poison mushrooms in the world. A sad example of this was in 2017, when a group of 14 people went picking wild mushrooms and were badly poisoned by death cap mushrooms. This resulted in some very serious injuries such as liver failure. But grocery store mushrooms, they're perfectly safe. Typically, they're grown in isolation specifically for grocery stores. Go nuts, as edible mushrooms are very healthy, but I personally don't recommend picking wild mushrooms. If you do, make sure you use a mushroom guide and consult an expert before eating any. Sure, you might miss out on a delicious treat, but you also won't die from eating it. Number five, microwave popcorn. Okay, big disclaimer ahead. There is a lot of misinformation and scare articles on the internet when it comes to nutrition. So definitely don't trust every food article you see, as there's too many food articles out there that link every known food under the sun to some type of cancer. So before cutting any food out of your diet, make sure to check the sources of those articles, or better yet, ask your doctor. 
But anyway, back in the day, there were a lot of internet articles that linked microwave popcorn to cancer. And those are some legitimately scary headlines, so they did attract a lot of attention. But let's investigate them for ourselves a little closer. Microwave popcorn, in essence, is just a type of corn kernel that pops. And there's certainly nothing that links popcorn itself to health risks. But people were more concerned about the microwavable bags they came in. Popcorn bags used to contain a special chemical used of their bag's non-stick coating. And when this coating decomposed, it created a compound called perfluoroctanoic acid. <coughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, didn't expect to get that first time. But I hope you don't mind, I'm just gonna call it PFOA. And this PFOA chemical concerned a lot of people. These articles often sourced this thyroid disruption study or this food packaging study. These studies check the amount of PFOAs within people's blood and their effect on people. But looking at these studies closer, the National Library of Medicine is definitely a reliable source. And the Environmental Health Perspectives is definitely a reliable journal. And they did find some significant links between the PFOAs and the microwave popcorn. And these studies were concerning enough to make the FDA step in and do their own review on microwave popcorn. And as a result of this FDA review, in 2011, food companies completely stopped using PFOA in their food packaging. Come 2016, the FDA went even further and banned three other possibly harmful chemicals in packaging. You can't say these guys don't try. But the good news is, as of today, any microwave popcorn you buy shouldn't contain any of these harmful chemicals. There is one other less direct danger to popcorn though. The CDC has found some people in popcorn manufacturing facilities have got what's known as popcorn lung, which is definitely not as fun as it sounds. But that risk of popcorn lung is exclusive to people working in popcorn manufacturing plants. And I'm assuming you probably don't work 12 hour days in a popcorn manufacturing manufacturing plant, so you're probably also safe from popcorn lung. Uh, except for one guy in Colorado who got popcorn lung after eating two bags of microwave popcorn a day for 10 years. But again, that's a real extreme, you're probably safe. So if popcorn's a movie night treat for you, nowadays you should be fine. But if you are concerned, maybe just pour the popcorn into a microwave safe container first. Or cook your popcorn on the stovetop. It's your movie night, you decide. And for our fourth dangerous food, Edible flowers? Are you sure this is a thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. This may sound like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised nowadays how many dishes are decorated with edible flowers. Particularly nowadays with the Instagram trend of taking a picture with food or desserts. Flowers on top can make that Instagram picture look even nicer. But the botanist James Wong recently noticed this trend and he noticed a lot of the flowers on these Instagram dishes were not edible and some could even be dangerous. One example was the very pretty Narcissi. It's quite common for the finishing touches on cakes. They certainly are beautiful, but they can also cause painful sores, swelling and rashes. The botanist also found that Instagram smoothies were often topped with flowers, such as the Catharanthus. Thanks, yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm on a roll today. Unfortunately, the catharanthus also contains toxic alkaloids often used in chemotherapy. And eating this flower can result in fever, nausea, vomiting, nerve damage, headache, and hallucinations. So, you know, with that pleasing collection of symptoms, I wouldn't even be touching it with a 10-foot pole. There are also puddings being topped with lantana flowers, which is often known to kill livestock due to liver failure, which is always good. Ironically, many of these dishes appeared on blogs that eulogize the evils of gluten and, oh no, dairy. Perish the thought, Bessie milk is liquid evil. Honestly, I wouldn't even care if I didn't know nowadays kids have been found to be more impressionable to online influencers than friends or movie stars. Maybe Instagram influencers can occasionally open a clinical trial or do a freaking Google search before they start advertising poison flowers as a dish to impressionable kids. That being said, there are plenty of beautiful flowers that are edible and are a great topping for cupcakes. I just hope people do their own research when they try to determine if a flower is safe to eat. Number three, shellfish. But I don't even like shellfish. It's that popular? All right, we'll talk about it. Fun random fact, shellfish is the first food I remember vomiting up. And I can't say I've cared for the taste since. But while I might personally prefer salmon, shellfish has been eaten all over the world for centuries. 
When people think of an expensive restaurant meal, they often think of a shellfish meal, such as lobster. But shellfish can also include shrimp on the barbie, crabs, clams, oysters, and so on. They're also super lean and very healthy, so I at least get the appeal. So what could be so dangerous about them? Well, there's a couple of factors that concern people. The first concern is about the heavy metals contained in some shellfish, but this can vary widely from where the shellfish is caught. And once again, there is a lot of scaremongering articles when it comes to heavy metals and fish. So once again, I tried to do my own research on what the science says, what the empirical studies say. While I haven't checked everywhere, I did check shellfish from many different areas around the world, such as China, Bangladesh, Bangladesh, India, and Vietnam. And these are some of the primary places we import our shellfish from. And the studies that I read showed minimal, safe levels of heavy metals in the shellfish. So I personally think that heavy metals are probably not going to be your first concern when you eat shellfish. However, obviously, I haven't checked the studies in every river and country. If you are concerned, I recommend doing your own research and looking at the trials on Google Scholar or Science Direct. Fish in general is incredibly healthy, so I don't want to discourage people from eating seafood unless I really do think it's a concern. Anyway, dry and boring studies aside, let's move on. Perhaps the biggest potential danger to shellfish is just how many people are allergic to it. In fact, shellfish is one of the five most common food allergies in the USA. And allergic reaction symptoms to shellfish are definitely no fun either. They can range from stomach pain to vomiting to cramps to hives or even swelling of the throat. If you do see someone having an allergic reaction such as swelling, the best first aid response is to call emergencies such as 911 or 000 depending on what country you're in. Help them lay flat and if there is a severe allergic reaction, apply an EpiPen or an AnaPen. And if they have an asthma reliever or puffer, make sure to give them that as well to use after. The third major concern many people have about shellfish is food poisoning. In fact, shellfish account for nearly 50% of seafood illnesses since 1973. Food poisoning can be due to bacteria, parasites, or viruses. But fortunately, there is a surefire way to make sure your shellfish is safe from these. Just cook it. Cook your shellfish thoroughly and food poisoning shouldn't be a problem. So overall, shellfish does have the potential to be a very dangerous food. But generally, if you buy it in a grocery store, you cook it thoroughly and don't have any known allergies, you should be fine. Then you can enjoy a healthy, unique tasting meal. I'm certainly not going to call it tasty, but it tastes unique. And coming in at number two, red kidney beans. Ah, good old all-American kidney beans. They're actually named kidney beans because of their color and kidney-like shape. This one is pretty commonly mentioned in other dangerous food listicles, but I at least wanted to mention it because I eat beans a lot and they're a really healthy protein and fiber-filled snack. But you just want to make sure they're absolutely cooked if they're not out of a can. Because according to the FDA, eating as few as four kidney beans can be toxic. Just four beans alone can result in severe nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea within one to three hours after eating them. But how can just a couple of tiny kidney beans cause such a huge reaction? Well, raw kidney beans have a very high concentration of phytohemagglutinin. This is a toxic chemical that can cause damage to the walls of the human gut. Fortunately, if you boil kidney beans for 20 minutes, this will completely destroy the phytohemagglutinin. That being said, canned beans are pre-cooked, so you should be perfectly safe if you get any kidney beans out of a can. It's the dried kidney beans you want to look out for. But if you do have someone who's just eaten raw kidney beans, generally the best thing you can do for them is to make sure they get plenty of water, as they'll likely be vomiting and need a bit of bathroom time for the next few hours. And this can take a lot of fluids out of our system. Fortunately, people normally recover fine within three to four hours after they start vomiting. So as long as your beans are canned, you can still safely make yourself a lovely chili con carne. And this might surprise you, but for the number one most dangerous food, hot dogs. Ooh, the traditional ballpark hot dog. Nice. I like having a hot dog at barbecues, but I'm not claiming hot dogs dangerous for the reasons you might have heard before. I'm certainly not demonizing the meat or the ingredients themselves. Just because you're getting the less attractive parts of the animal, that doesn't necessarily make them more toxic. 
Although the WHO has said that the nitrites in processed meat should be eaten in moderation. But there's a far, far bigger danger to hot dogs, and that is they're so frequently choked on. In fact, this ballpark favourite has become the leading cause of choking fatalities among children. You see, in America, on the 4th of July alone, over 150 million hot dogs are eaten. This results in a lot of choking hazards for kids and adults. And this history of choking isn't just limited to children. Although a lot less, there have been multiple reports of adults choking on hot dogs too. These adult choking deaths have often happened at hot dog eating contests. And hot dog eating contests have been a running tradition in America for decades now. One example is the International 4th of July Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island. In this, the goal is to eat as many hot dogs as possible in 10 minutes. The current record stands at 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes. And by all that is secular, I encourage you never to try and break this record. I would never forgive myself if you got hurt because of something I said in this video. On a lighter note, yes, Matt Stoney did break the original previous record of 60 hot dogs in 10 minutes when he ate 62 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Jeepers, I'd feel queasy at 4. Fortunately, these choking hazards don't happen too often with adults, but you definitely should keep an eye on any kids eating hot dogs, as food choking events in children result in over 10,000 emergency room visits per year in America alone. Previously, I thought these choking accidents mostly happened from toys for children, but toys are actually very well regulated with warning labels nowadays. But it's much harder to put a warning label on a hot dog. And sadly, hot dogs remain a prime choking contender for kids. Because per year, there is an estimated 20 billion hot dogs eaten in America. That's billion with a B. That's a lot of opportunities for choking hazards. 20 billion America, that is dedication to the Frankfurter right there. In fact, hot dogs have become so notorious for children that doctors have started warning parents about the dangers of cutting hot dogs wrong for children. But we're equipped with knowledge now. So if you do have a young son, daughter, niece or nephew that wants a hot dog, consider slicing the hot dog vertically, then horizontally twice. In other words, cut them into strips first, and then cut them again into smaller pieces. And if they really want a traditional hot dog, just make sure to at least cut the sausage in half long ways before putting it in the bun. This alone really helps reduce a choking risk. And if you're eating a hot dog, I just encourage you to eat it at a normal pace. Unless you're a professional, maybe avoid eating hot dogs in speed contests. I can assure you, the contest is not worth choking on. Well, I better get a move on. Anyway, personally, I try to keep in mind, even the lousiest canned meals we have today are way safer than much of the best food we had 100 years ago. Whether our water's bottled or out of a tap, personally, I'm just glad it's safe to drink. And just a heads up, recently in memberships, I did a video on the five movies I walked down on, as well as my real thoughts on the Fifty Shades series, because I guess I like to punish myself. I think I said a couple of positive things about it. They're part of the Real Thoughts video series I'm currently filming for members. So if for a couple of bucks you're interested in trying out memberships, you can try it by pressing the join button below the video. But either way, if you have your own comments or experiences with these foods, or you think I missed a danger dangerous food, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.